Exploring Life Extension, an Immortality Institute film. It's not a matter of whether there will never be life extension, because I don't think that they're ever going to be able to forbid life extension. It's a matter of how aggressively we pursue it. And, and I think Nick Bostrom's recent fable uh, of the dragon, you know, puts this very clearly. Uh, if you see that there will be a time when negligible senescence or, or completely delayed aging is possible, and you see a time when all the diseases that kill people today can be cured, then it's not a matter of, uh, you know, that the, this ne future is never going to get here. It's that all these people are going to die unnecessarily. If we could get it 20 years sooner, all these people will be saved. Life extension for almost a quarter of a century now. Uh, one thing that is hilarious that still comes up really is the idea of overpopulation. If you live a lot longer, won't the earth become overpopulated? Well, you know, back in the, the early days of discussing these ideas, that was something people pressed pretty strongly because population was still expanding quite rapidly. But there's been a large demographic transition since then. Uh, many countries have reached zero population growth, or even beginning to decline. Um, the USA has a, a larger population growth than most of Europe simply because of more immigration as well as you know, certain groups having more births. But overall, we're headed towards um, really the end of population growth in the world in a few decades. So the objections no longer has the same driving force, though it never really did have very much force in the first place. Because if you look at the mathematics of it, really what matters is how many children each couple has, not how long each person lives. That makes a relatively small difference. So even if, uh, even if that was a problem, it'd be more reasonable to ask people to limit the number of children they have rather than to die. Life extension consists of attempts to extend human life beyond the current maximum lifespan. Uh, this is the weird thing about life extension or immortality. Um, I mean, there's a group of people who take it on themselves to say, you know, we're for this thing that most people seem to be against and, and, and we really want to advocate for it. But in a certain literal sense, everybody wants to live one more day. Why is it difficult to get people to choose life over death? You wouldn't think that it would be all that complicated a question. I think that just by presenting it as this question and making a big deal over it, we forget how blindingly obvious the answer is. You know, if you're the sort of person who would not voluntarily walk off a cliff, then that means you're on the side of life. Putting things in sharp perspective, University of Cambridge gerontologist Dr. Aubrey de Grey calls aging a barbaric phenomenon that shouldn't be tolerated in polite society. The main reason why people feel that curing aging would be a bad idea, and that, that in other words, conversely, that aging itself is actually a good thing, is as a coping strategy. Yes, people don't think that there's any prospect of doing anything about aging and think that aging is fundamentally horrible. Um, the only real way to um, you know, to, to, to put it out of one's mind is to convince oneself that it's actually not so bad after all. But if you took a, take a look at the population in general, I would say most people are skeptical about anti-aging research. They, they, they don't think it's possible to, um, to slow down human aging within a, um, a reasonable future. And so if you can show that for instance, it is possible to reverse aging in mice, or it is possible to reverse or delay even if to a small degree aging in, in old people. Uh, I think that would bring a lot of attention to the field, and it would give people the feel, sensation that real anti-aging um, interventions are within their grasp. Really, where we have convinced ourselves of this absurdity that aging is actually a good thing. Um, you know, that's all it is, it's a chance. It's my job to wake people up, and the only real way to do it is to present actual factual information. In other words, to develop, to do experimental work in the laboratory that, dem that shows incontrovertibly that aging can be very dramatically altered. The burden is upon us, the people that know, you and I, that know, you know, we have the responsibility because we know that the, the average citizen the average population does, don't know what we know, and so they don't have that responsibility. But we need to, you know, we need to enlighten enough people to, uh, to make an effect while, while we can, so we can benefit ourselves and all the people we care about. The Mortality Institute is it brings together people who 
for whatever reason, don't buy into the, the whole notion that there's nothing that can be done about aging. You know, there's, there's thousands and thousands of us out there that we've already found, and probably tens of thousands or more out there who have this feeling that we can do something about aging, but we haven't found somewhere to turn to because the 99.9% .9 of the rest of society tells us that there's nothing we can do about it.